Hello and welcome to my Edit and Masterclass series where I take you, somebody who has no idea what AI agents even are, and turn you into someone who can reliably create them and even knows how to sell them by the end of the series. So if you haven't watched part one, I highly suggest you do. In that video, we go through how to sign up, how hosting works, and we eventually get to the point where we create the base of our AI agent right here. And in today's lesson, we are gonna build on this AI agent foundation that we created in part one. We're gonna go through tools, we're gonna to talk more about APIs and HTTP requests, and then we're gonna dive into system messages even further. And that cadence of building on previous videos is gonna continue for the rest of the series. And without any further ado, let's get started. So first of all, what is an AI agent? And what makes it differ from just a basic AI automation? Well. What we're looking at here is essentially like a very soft clone of ChatGPT, right? It has a model, we can talk to it and can remember our conversations. And you saw that in the last lesson. But what you'll notice right here is tools and tools and how an AI uses those tools are what makes an AI agent an AI agent. For example, if I click on this tool button here, you will now see on the right a list of a ton of different tools that are native to N8N, right? We see a bunch of stuff, including Google, right? Google Calendar, Google Chat, Google Firestone, Google Docs, right? Google Drive, for example, a million different things. And these tools can be attached to our AI agent and they can actually use these tools on our behalf. So let's do a simple one. Let's say I wanted to add Wikipedia. Once it's been added, it's automatically connected to the AI agent. And that AI agent now has the ability to essentially call on Wikipedia and answer questions about it. So we can go and chat and say, hey, use the Wikipedia node and tell me about AI agents. And so we should see here that it should call on this Wikipedia tool and that's what happened right away. So instead of just relying on its training data to answer us like it normally would, it actually went to Wikipedia, figured out what the article said about AI agents and then spit that out as a response. But one tool isn't really enough. We would wanna add more tools. So like I could add a Google Drive tool, right? And then I could add something like Airtable, you know, and I could just continue adding tool after tool after tool and eventually have just a very large toolbox that my AI agent has access to. And with those tools, I can then tell the AI agent to do a number of different things. And it's going to intelligently decide on the best tool to use for the job. And those tools could themselves include AI agents, right? You could have AI agents talking to AI agents, talking to AI agents all the way down the stack. But the thing that makes it agentic is that it doesn't always do the same thing every time, right? The way it chooses its tools and how it executes the job is dynamic and it all depends on what you tell it to do. Now compare that to an AI automation where it always does the same thing every single time, right? It's kind of just linear, it's straight line and it could be, hey, every single time you get a mention in Slack, I want you to, I don't know, send an email to me. A happens and B happens and C happens. It's not dynamic. You're never wondering like which tools are gonna to use, right? Linear, linear is for automations. Dynamic is for agents. Now, if that's kind of confusing, that's totally okay. It'll make more sense as you see some practical applications. Just remember AI agents usually means lots of tools, dynamic. And what you will also notice is when it comes to tools and actually using them inside NNN, we usually need to hook them up. Like we did in part one, you remember when we hooked up our OpenAI chat model where we actually went in, went to OpenAI, got an API key? That is usually the way it goes for all tools as well, right? They're hooked up to some sort of third-party account and need some way to verify what the account is. Now, Wikipedia was actually a um, exception, right? That's why I kind of did, did that right away. There's no API key, there's no account to do. They just let you use it as much as you want. But for the rest of these, you need to attach an account. And for today, we're actually gonna go through how to hook up your Google stuff. And we'll actually like send emails and do that sort of thing. And so how do I do that? Well, like you saw before with OpenAI, we're just gonna go to documentation and that's gonna tell us how to do it step-by-step. Step. But first things first, I want you to go to select credential here on Google Drive. You're gonna to go to create new credential and you're just gonna have this up and ready to go. So again, what do we do when we're confused and we don't know how to do something? We're always gonna look at the documentation. So we're gonna click this link, open docs, and this brings us to the instructions of how to actually do this, right? The Google one is kind of tricky, and that's why I'm doing it as an example here, but NNN does a decent job of actually walking you through it. And what we're gonna do is we are going to follow their instructions and do it ourselves. And so the first thing we need to do is create a Google Cloud account. So we're just gonna click this link, 
And that's gonna take you to this page. For the rest of this walkthrough, I'm gonna have the docs up on another monitor, so I'm not constantly switching between them on this screen. I suggest you do the same as you follow along. So once you create your Google Cloud account, you're gonna to go to console on the top right. And then over here on the top left, you are going to either create a new project or select one that you already have. For me, I'm gonna be using NADN YouTube demo. If you decide to create a new project, you might have to wait a second or two for it to actually create it. And then you need to switch to it. So when we go through this, make sure you're on the correct project because you can have multiple projects in your console. And to do that, just verify that it has the name you want up on the top left. Next, we're gonna click these three bars in the top left. We're gonna go to APIs and services. So now we're gonna come up here to the search bar and we're gonna search and enable all the Google APIs we want. So think Google Drive, Calendar, Email, Contacts, all that good stuff. So I'm gonna search for Gmail. Gmail API is gonna pop up. We're gonna do enable. We can see that it's now enabled and now I'm gonna quickly run through the rest of them. So do Gmail, Drive, Calendar, Contacts, Sheets, Docs, really any of the ones you think you're gonna have this agent use. Okay, once you've gone through and enabled all the APIs you want, we're gonna come back to the left. You're gonna to go to OAuth consent screen, click that. We're gonna do get started. And then you're just gonna fill out your app name and your user support email. The app name doesn't really matter. Um, email can kind of be whatever, just one you have access to. You're gonna hit next. You're gonna do external, next. It's the same email address you did before. Agree, continue, create. All right, next you're gonna go back up to the top left, click those three bars. We're gonna to go to APIs and services and go to credentials. Go to create credentials and you're gonna do OAuth client ID. Application type will be web app. Again, name this whatever you want. Web client one and n is fine. Then down here for authorized redirect URIs, you're gonna hit plus. And what's gonna go here is gonna be what we had inside of NNN. So I want you to go back to NNN. And then you see here inside the Google Drive thing, you're gonna copy this. So just click the copy. And again, where how did I do that? How did I get this page? I had the Google Drive up. I went to select credential, create new credential and it's right here. So copy that, go back into Google Cloud, paste that in, and you're set. So you can then hit create. Okay, now when we're here, we need to copy over the client ID and the client secret. So copy the client ID over, and don't worry guys, I'm gonna delete all this stuff later. And then client secret, paste that over as well. Okay, before we sign in Google, we gotta go back in the cloud and just clean up a couple more things. Okay, so once you're back inside here, I want you to go to APIs and services, and then go down to OAuth consent screen. You're then gonna go to audience. You're then gonna publish app, right? So you're gonna go to confirm. Okay, now you can go back in, go to sign in with Google, select the email it's been associated with, go to advanced, go to run the cloud, and then give it access Then go to continue. Now you're finally set and signed up. As you saw, it's a little confusing, but now that you've done it, you don't have to do it again. So congratulations. You got the most annoying third party API verification deal set up. And now let's kind of talk about the different parameters that are available inside of this Google drive and kind of go through how tools work in general. So, this kind of goes for any tool that you use inside of NADN. You're going to see some sort of similar setup. Always up top, there's going to be different credentials. You can always create new ones or edit the ones that you have in there by clicking on this little pencil. Next, there's different tool descriptions. You're not usually going to mess with that. Now, resource. Resource is just like, what do you want it to do? So for resource, do we want it to play around with files, files and folders, shared drive, or a custom API call? I'm going to stick with files for now. Operation, do you want it to upload a file, download, move, right? These are kind of self-explanatory. This is where you're able to pick what you want it to actually do. You have your input data field name. So this is the name of the file that's going into the drive, right? So if I was pushing something from over here on the left-hand side, we're saying, hey, it's called data. It may or may not be called that in reality. You have file name, that's where you name the file. And here, like, where do you want it to go inside the drive? Now, real quickly, you're gonna notice these little stars on the right. Now, this is a really cool thing with AI. So if I click these, what you see now is what's called defined automatically by the model. And if I hit this X, 
you can kind of see the code that's going on underneath it, a little JavaScript. So what defined automatically by the model means is that the AI is going to be able to figure out J just on us talking to it, like naturally, just like I would a person, what to put for the input data field name, what to put for the parent drive, and what to put for the parent folder. I don't have to explicitly say every single time or hard code it in here that the parent drive must be X, parent folder must be Y. It's going to be able to tease that out based on the conversation. And while that doesn't seem super useful here, as you look at more and more tools and we go through more and more examples, you'll see how much we tend to lean on this thing defined automatically by the model. This is where AI really shines. Also up top, you'll see settings and we'll go more into detail with things on here, but these often have to do with like, if there's errors, right? What do you want it to do? Do you want to give it notes? You can actually write notes inside of here. How many times do you want it to execute? And if there's no data, do you want it to still put something out? Again, we'll dive deeper into these in more advanced workflows. Now let's add another tool. Let's add a Gmail tool. Now this should be pretty easy to connect now that we actually hooked up all of our Google stuff. So we're going to create new credential. And this one, we can just sign in with Google. Super easy. Yep, allow, continue, boom. Not hard at all. So now what I wanted to do, I wanted to send a message. I could also have it do a draft. Let's just do a draft. Right, first, we don't have to send off any messages. But again, let's see some of this AI work in action, right? So subject, I can do that with AI. Message, I can also do it with AI. And other properties, attachments, BCC, all these things. We probably want to know who we want to send it to, right? And again, we could hard code this, or we could have AI figure this out. Now, here's the thing. For it to figure out who we want to send the email to, if we don't explicitly tell it the email, how would it know what the email should be? The answer is it wouldn't, right? If I tell you to email Fred and I've never given you Fred's email, you're kind of out of luck. So how would this actually be useful to us? Well, imagine we had something like Google Contacts, you know, and we had, you know, some little database right here that had everyone's email in it, including Fred's. So in here, now that it's defined auto automatically by the model, if I say, hey, send an email to Fred, this AI agent's thing gonna be like, oh yeah, Fred, I'm sending an email, I don't know what the email is, I'm gonna go check the contacts first, right? And this is obviously a very simple example, but that's there to demonstrate how an AI agent is able to like, okay, I know I need A to do B, so let me check A first to do that. And so you, and so we could actually go in here and we could do all the stuff with the contacts, but to keep this lesson short, I'm going to demo it a little differently. So I'm actually going to delete this. And what we're going to do to kind of demonstrate two things at once is we're going to talk about the system message, because like I said before, it's like, okay, I know to hit the contacts to send the email. If I don't have the email, but does it, does it actually know that inherently? Will it actually be that smart that without any sort of prompting, it knows that logic to check for emails, to send an email? Sometimes, sometimes not. And what about more complex logic? What if we get into really, really complicated agents with tons of tools? How does it know logically to do A before B, B before C, but sometimes do E before B, right? How does it know that? Well, that's going to be the system message. And remember, we talked about this a little bit before where we said, hey, I only want you to respond in old English to me, right? We gave it some logic. Well, we can do that much more in depth when it comes to tools because we can say, hey, you're a personal assistant, you have these tools, right? You have the email tool, Wikipedia tool, Google Drive tool. And then we can go through and then explain, this is what the email tool does. This is what the Wikipedia tool does. This is what the Google Drive tool does. And then we can even go further and say, here's examples of how it could be used. Here's how I want you to use it in example A, B, and C, right? And here's what I want the output to look like. Like we can get super, super detailed with this. But what if I don't know what to write? Well, guess what we're going to do? Because this is exactly what I do in all my production level stuff. I just have AI figure it out. So, so we can go to ChatGPT. My personal favorite is Gemini, but you can just say, hey, give me a system message for an AI agent with the following tools. Following tools. Wikipedia, Gmail, send message, and Google Drive. And what it's going to do is it's going to give us a system message we can plug in there. And usually the ones they create are fairly sophisticated. And this is a huge help 
when you start getting more and more complicated systems, right? Because I don't always want to be the one who goes in and does this by hand every single time. Anytime we can lean on AI to do some of the grunt work with system messages, and it tends to write pretty good ones, we do that. And so you can see here, obviously, this is a very simple agent, but you can see what it gave us, right? Hey, AI assistant, it lists out the tools, Wikipedia, Gmail, Google Drive, says what it does, and then it gives examples, right? I love that. So it gives us some options. Let's go ahead and just take the second one. This works fine. And I'm just going to copy paste it into here. And so the way it's going to work is every time we give that AI a message, it's essentially going to check it against the system message and say, hey, what am I supposed to do here? And we can actually set this to expression. And if you hit this button up, it'll bring it up larger. But I'm going to write Chase's email is this. And this is just my personal email. I want you to do that the same for your own inbox, because this is going to show you how it can intelligently be like, oh, send the email to Chase. Well, I'm going to check my system message, and I'm going to know what his email is. So without ever actually telling the AI in a prompt, it's going to be able to fill it out. And this is taking the place of us going through Google Contacts and connecting all that just for the sake of time. Now, let's have our AI agent do something. Let's have it send an email, or rather, create a draft. So I just want you to open the chat, and I just want you to tell it, hey, send an email or send a draft about whatever. So hey, um, can you send a draft email to Chase asking him what's up? Now I gave it something of a message to do. I didn't give it a title, remember, so it should also intelligently figure out the title as well as the actual address. So let's see if it works, right? We see it hitting the model and we see it hitting the draft. So it says, I have created a draft email to Chase with the subject, what's up? Asking how he's doing. Would you like me to send it now or make any changes? Well, let's see if it actually created the draft email. And there's a couple of ways we can do that. Obviously, we can go into our email. And when I come in here and I look at the drafts, it actually did populate. Chase Hannigan, what's up? Hey, Chase, just wanted to check in and see how you're doing. Hope you're doing well. But we'll see kind of it isn't really formatted great, right? It says best your name. But you know how we could fix these things? Well, we would just go inside the system message and say, hey, here's how I want you to sign up every email. Here's how I want you to start it, et cetera, et cetera. These system messages are really where you make your money when it comes to AI agents and customization. But it works. So we check the email, but there's other places we can check it too, right? We have the logs. And so if I click here on create a draft in Gmail, I can see it actually did what it said it was going, going to do. And I can see the logs there. You're also able to see the logs if you click on the AI agent and look at logs here, right? It can make it a little more detailed, but because you can see the input and you can see the output in response. So you can get detailed. You can see the ID, the thread ID, all this stuff. And we're actually going to play with that in later lessons. But again, looking down here, again, on the input, what's up message and to email. Again, I never explicitly gave it the to email and I never explicitly gave it the subject. He had it filled those out. Why? Because we have these set to be defined automatically by the model, defined by the model, defined by the model. And again, very simple demonstration of that in action. But hopefully you can start to see like, wow, you can really leverage AI to like, do a lot of work and do a lot of things without you sitting there and painstakingly being like, say this, say that, do this, do that. So this is where I'm going to leave us at the end of part two of this NADN masterclass. And while it might not seem like we did a whole lot, I mean, we just added a couple tools and connected our Google account. I hope you understand how foundational this idea of tools and system messages really is, because that is what everything is going to be based off going forward, right? understanding how to make the AI agent do things and do them well and do it consistently is all about this tool and system message relationship. And you just saw one of the most basic examples of it. But in future lessons, we're going to add more and more tools, more and more complexity, and we're going to start doing agents talking to agents, right? Main agent, sub agents, some sort of orchestration system. That is something you can build upon really, really well and create something extremely sophisticated and robust. So as always, I hope that was educational. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Go ahead, check out my school community. There's a link to that down in the description as well. And I will see you soon in part three.